All right, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to point out just one good example shown in a video clip of Liz Truss facing a select committee hearing of how Truss as prime minister is going to do very badly with the public. I've got other examples as well, and you can expect to see a bit of a series over the coming weeks on Truss's uh, unsuitability in a range of areas. But this one is about her inability to convince the public when facing questions. There'll be a honeymoon period where the public will give her a chance, absolutely. She may or may not dodge a bullet this autumn, though she's going to have to massively change her position to do that. But come the new year, at the latest, as more people see her in interviews, she is going to crash and burn. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So someone posted a series of clips of Liz Truss in various interview situations this weekend. I'll post it in the description below, of course. But it's the first one that really shows the difference between her and Johnson for me. See, most senior politicians would prepare for any interview. Doesn't matter whether it's a media interview, a House of Commons debate or a select committee hearing. Neither Boris Johnson nor Liz Truss ever do this. They're just fundamentally too lazy. And I still dismiss any notion that Truss has improved this summer. People keep saying this. Oh, how much more assured she's looked. Oh, she's really come on leaps and bounds as the Tory leadership contest has gone on. Rubbish, says I. She has looked assured because the polls tell her that she's comfortably in the lead. So that makes her more comfortable. And all of her interviews have been directed by people sympathetic to the Conservatives and the audiences have been conservative as well. Wait until she's up against people with a critical line of questioning. I'm willing to bet she hasn't improved at all. In fact, if she believes her own hype that she has come on, she may actually do worse because she'll fa fail to spot the danger signs. In this clip, Chris Bryant of Labour asked Trust to give him an example of a human rights issue that the Foreign Secretary has raised with a Gulf state. Trust initially tries to make out that she can't remember the latest one. Now, this is bizarre enough because surely the latest one is the easiest to remember. But Brian isn't precious about the latest example. He said, no, no, I don't mean that. He asked Trust to give him any example, just one example of any human rights issue with any Gulf state that the Foreign Secretary has raised. She tries to say that she'll write to him later. He's not interested in having his question dodged. Just one example, any example. And she can't think of one. Now, it's worth noting the sorts of people who might come across clips like this. So we can essentially say there are three types of people. There are those who will always back the Conservatives. They'll watch it and it really doesn't matter what they think, whether they try and defend Truss or whether they go, oh dear. They're going to vote Tory anyway. It doesn't matter. There are those who will never vote for the Tories, at least in the current political and economic climate. They'll watch it and it doesn't matter what they think because they're going to vote against the Tories or not vote at all. But then there are swing voters. So they're going to vote, but they're not sure who to vote for. You know, they'll vote for the Tories in one election and they'll vote against them in another. They'll watch that and they'll see a foreign secretary who is either lying or whose memory is so bad that you couldn't in all seriousness trust them with the complex affairs of state. Her failure to prepare for very obvious questions and in interviews of this sort and select committee hearings are probably the most brutal because you have political opponents asking them, and they can keep asking them till they're happy. Like in PMQs, you don't, even the leader of the opposition who gets six questions, and the vast majority of MPs only get one question. Leader of the opposition gets six questions, blimey. But it's still a case of they ask the question, if it's dodged, it's dodged. They've only got six goes. They can't interrupt or anything like that. They can't keep asking until they're happy. No, select committee members, they can just keep asking. And if you start talking crap or going off on a tangent, they'll interrupt you and say, no, no, that's not what I'm asking about. It's more like a conversation than a, a debate. So they should get the most intense preparation. And this isn't an isolated example. She never prepares. She even gets caught out by friendly media interviewers because they're used to, Tory MP comes on, all right, I'll ask these questions so I can say I've asked tough questions, right? They'll answer with a load of rubbish. Then I'll move on. I'll not ask any follow-up questions. But she trips up even over those She's so bad that she can't even get through a friendly media interview. So how did Boris Johnson get away with them? Because he's just as lazy. He never prepared properly either. He didn't know the answer to most of these questions. Or if he did, he didn't want to say. Well, he just lied. If Johnson had uh, been asked to mention a human rights issue that he had raised, he would just make something up. 
During his final appearance as Prime Minister before the Liaison Select Committee, Johnson was being asked about his trip when he was Foreign Secretary to a party hosted by Russian agents, including an actual Russian spy, without his security detail. He just lied about it. He was a little bit evasive. He knows the danger of saying too much at a Select Committee hearing. But he still made sure he answered the question whilst also claiming his memory was a bit hazy. Because that's what you always do if it's dodgy. Oh, I'm not quite sure, but I think... Mm. He was asked, for example, if he informed his officials of the event afterwards. He says he probably did. He didn't. Provably he didn't. But that didn't matter. In that moment, for any swing voters who watched that question and answer, whether live or in a clip, he answered the question in a way that for many people might seem reasonable. And outside select committees, he was even more blatant with his lies. And the reason why Johnson could do this, and Truss cannot, is because Johnson's brain's quite unusual. You know, making things up is his default behaviour. A while back, he was interviewed and he was asked about his hobbies. He could have just answered the question. You know, his hobby is probably just enjoying a nice drink with, with good conversation. It's all he seems to do, like a bit of a party. Nothing wrong with that. At the time, this this was not even politically contentious. You know, he, he could have just said that. What he actually said was he likes to turn wine, wine crates into... He makes model buses out of them and paints them. It's like, what a stupid lie. He even lied in response to a question where there was no danger. It's like he was just taking the piss. It wasn't a tricky question probing his suitability to lead. It was as harmless a question as you can ever imagine being put to a head of government. You almost think that if he was asked for his favourite colour, he'd reply hamsters. He just lies. He never considers whether a question requires a lie or if the truth is fine. He just lies by default. But most people cannot do this. When they try... If it's a, I mean, there are lies that are, you know, plausible and obviously dishonest people can, can come up with those. But when it's a ridiculous lie, you can see their brain saying, hang on, stop the mouth. Hang on, are we sure we're going to get away with this? We can't say this, can we? You saw it in Michael Gove. I, I rem still remember when they were defending Dominic Cummings over uh, Barnard's Castle. Michael Gove actually tried to claim that, oh, yeah, of course, he'd tested his eyesight in the past by going for a drive in a car. But you could see his expression. He couldn't get through it. We saw it in this video clip of Liz Truss where she couldn't bring herself to just make something up. Just respond. Later on, someone will find out that she lied. Doesn't matter. The people watching in that moment won't see the follow up. But she lacks the confidence of someone born into privilege with, with a deep sense of narcissism, who will never know anything other than a comfortable ex existence, can make up whatever fantasy he likes, he'll never suffer serious consequences. Liz Truss grew up into a normal life. Her experiences will have taught her that there are consequences, and those consequences can be unpleasant. The most unpleasant consequence Boris Johnson ever faced is losing a job. But not losing a job as understood by the rest of us, because that's serious. He's like, well, hang on a minute, I'm going to pay the bills until I get another. I might not get another for six months, a year. In his case, when he lost one job, he just moved into another for uh, the same pay or better pay quite often. And this is why trust is going to crash and burn, in my view. Even if it turns out she's telling the most desperate lies to her party right now just to get elected leader. And she makes the mother of all U-turns and actually goes and freezes the energy bills this autumn. That'll get her through this autumn. Even if she dodges the blame for everything else that she can't actually deal with, which is possible because she's only just taken over the government, the public will give her a chance. If she freezes energy bills, the public will give her a chance. Even if she somehow gets through the rest of this year, dodges every crisis or kicks the can down the road, people are going to start to see more of her and more of her trying to answer important questions. And she's not going to prepare for them. She's going to continue to trip herself up. She doesn't have Johnson's ability to imagine a fantasy world where she makes all the right decisions and believes in it so assuredly that she can just lie about it with confidence. During this year, Liz Truss has tried to adopt elements of both the Thatcher and the Johnson playbook in order to make herself more appealing to party members. But it's not who she is. She's like someone trying to read a script in a foreign language. She's just saying the words as best she can without the faintest idea what she's actually saying. Like someone with a tattoo of Chinese calligraphy which translates as, please choose one of the images above. 
But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.